about there, see? <laughs> Maybe you better take her out. Yeah. No. No, I'm going to be with him. I want David to know I'm here. He's barely conscious, Mrs. Rothenberg. I don't care. David will know. My son will know. Davy, Mom is here, sweetheart. I love you. Marie, we, we better go. No. Yeah. I wanted to ask you anyway, without her around. You mean about Charlie? Yeah. Everybody's looking for him. We're having the biggest manhunt we ever had around here. Can you give us any kind of a lead? He's weak. In his mind, he thinks everyone's out to get him. Do you have any friends? Not that I know of. Maybe some prison buddies. He's an ex-con? Oh, yeah. Well, Charlie's got quite a record. Even the FBI was after him. You know about that? Not until after they were married. They were together a few years. She found out he was stealing. She threw him out. How's your financial situation? Not good. Well, we started a fund at the department for David. We're jammed with calls. Mrs. Rothenberg, I'm Dr. Ackauer. David, how is he? Can I see him? Well, I think you'd be better off getting some sleep. I'm staying here. Listen to the doctor, Marie. There's nothing we can do for Davy now. I'm not leaving. Your son has third-degree burns over 90% of his body. He's in shock. He's lost a lot of fluid. At this rate, his kidneys could fail. David is... An open wound. He's a target for every infection, every complication. The next 48 hours are critical. What does that mean? Your son... Mrs. Rothenberg, David will probably die. Come to bed. Charles is out there. Somewhere. He should have listened to you when he had a feeling something was wrong. What do you want me to say? I don't know. Maybe it's better if... Uh... If what? If David dies? He does make it, what kind of life is he going to have? It isn't fair to him, all the scarring, the disfiguring. I don't want to hear any more of this. We have to talk about it, Marie. We have to think about what kind of future David's going to have. I don't care about that. David's life is now, tonight. If they can pull him through. You have to face reality, Marie. No. You know what lies ahead for David if he lives. You know he'll never have a normal life. I don't want to hear any more of this. For his mother. Is this what you want for him? Yes, that's what I want for him.
Uh, operator, yeah, uh, this is uh, Commander Miller from the uh, Buena Park Fire Department. I'm calling to inquire about the little boy that was brought in. Yeah, the one from the fire. No, I can't hold on. I just want to find out how David is. Well, can you tell me? I already said I'm from the fire department. Damn you! Hello? Hello? He calls back. Keep him talking as long as he can. Don't let him talk to anybody else. I don't want him to know how or where David is. How is he? He's about the same. I stayed with him most of the night. It's time for the hydro. You know what they're going to be doing to him now in the baths? He's raw, and they'll be scraping more of him away. I don't know what to say, Murray. Why haven't they found Charles? What's taking them so long? Every cop in the country is out looking for him, and they can't find him. They will. It takes time. David doesn't have time. My son, my, my, my son is in there fighting for his life. And there's not a damn thing I can do to help him. He's so little, he's so helpless. I, I want to hold him so bad to tell him it's going to be all right, and I can't. There's no place to touch him. His body's burned away. His face is gone. My baby's gone. I want my baby. Buena Park Police. No, I'm sorry, I can't give any information about David on the telephone. Clark, any news on David's condition? Well, there's no change at this time. No news is no news. Any news on the whereabouts of David's father? Not at this time. Not at this time. I understand how you feel, Charlie. Is, is, is David in a lot of pain? Is he in a lot of pain? We know you love your son. We all know you've been through a lot. Don't you think you ought to come in? Give yourself a break, buddy. Come in for David. What is it, David? Slow down, he needs a rest. Maybe he needs more pain medication. Why don't you ask him if he's in pain? I'm telling you to, to talk to him. Ask him. David will respond. Mrs. Rothenberg, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. No. No, you can't treat my son this way. Dr. Akar, please. Sue Martinez calling about the burn boy in room 3B. No, no, he's not the burn boy in 3B. He Thank you. Name. I'll hold. It's David. David Rothenberg. I see. Well, just tell him that I called. He's a little boy. He's frightened. He can't speak. He can't see. And he can't feel anything but pain until my son can speak for himself again, until David can see again. I am his voice. I am his eyes. Marie, listen, I, I just got a call from downstairs. A couple of people here to see you. What people? I don't want to see anyone. The man was a burn patient. They want to help you. You have your nerve. David's not your kid. He's mine. You're not going through this. I am. I don't want to see anybody, especially anybody to burn. Mrs. Rothenberg, I'm Judy Curtis. Believe me, I know what you're going through. My husband was in a terrible accident, an explosion. We didn't think he'd make it through. I was burned over 50% of my body. 
Including my face. No, you haven't been burned. I don't believe you've been burned. You haven't been burned. That's why we wanted to meet you. We wanted you to see. Surely there's been a major break in a case that police have been waiting and waiting for. A New York man accused of setting his son on fire in a Buena Park motel room appeared relieved today after officers arrested him at a San Francisco YMCA. The capture of Charles Rothenberg ends one of the most extensive manhunts in Southern California history. An anticipated full confession, however, adds a bizarre note to this most heinous of crimes. If the boy does survive, we have learned from the district attorney's office the maximum sentence that Rothenberg could receive... to stay with me. Honey, uh, I've been gone three weeks already, and, and I'll be here for the sentence. You don't have to go right back. You just can't deal with all this. You can't even look at David. Can't stand seeing him like this. What do you see when you look at him? Just David. He's not just Davy anymore. I see a different little boy. And you're looking in the wrong place. I wish I could change the way I feel. So do I. John says goodbye. He tried to see you before he left, but you were sleeping. So, I guess it is really just the two of us now. He loves you, David. routine with burn patients. The cartilage is brittle. It falls away. What else can I expect, Dr. Akawa? What other parts of my son are going to routinely fall away? Yeah, Marie. He doesn't have very much left. It's important to me. His ears, like everything else about him, are important to me. I know that. And I don't want to be surprised like that again. Now, wait a minute. If you even have the slightest idea that something could happen, I want to know about it before it happens. Also, help me. I'll pull my son out of here. All right. There's a strong possibility we may have to amputate David's fingers. Because they're dead, and if we don't remove them, it will increase the risk of infection. But we're planning to continue the grafts in a day or so. 
has no skin. He still has a small patch of skin left under his arm. I want to know how you do that. I want to know everything. I want to know every step of the way. You never committed a burglary or did any damage to Luch House? No, I never did Luch House. I haven't been in trouble, you know, since some... Um, almost five years. <sighs> People will tell you how good I was when I took care of my son. Did you have it in mind at that time to leave David there to sleep by himself? No, I was there with him. But just to leave him there for a nap or a little sleep? No, David, David, David never leaves. He never leaves me. He left you the night you set the fire. I left him. I think your intention was to hurt David in order to get back at your wife. No, you're wrong. I had every intention of killing myself. OK, then why didn't you? Because I also have a conscience, too. <laughs> it bothers me. I'm not an animal, you know? I'm just uh... Well? It was confusing to me, you know? I don't think you wanted to do yourself in as much as you wanted to do David in. Is that right? At, um, at the beginning, I wanted to do us both. In fact, I wanted um, David and myself to go in such a way that Marie would never have known about it, just um, no identity at all. I wanted to kill us both. Yeah, but you chickened out. What's not quite clear to me is what made you chicken out and why you didn't take David out of the room with you. Where? At the motel, when you set the fire. Did you use matches? Just one match. When did you chicken out? When you threw the match? Like, uh, I'm telling you, I just can't get into it all. It, it, uh, just, it, it built up. I didn't want to do it, but I did. I understand, Charlie. Yeah, well, I don't think you do understand. You, you see, that's just it. You don't. No. David, what did the kid do that made you want to hurt him? I just couldn't take it. You, you don't know Marie. I'm not saying she's a bad person. And you don't know her, her mouth. It, you don't know her. No, I don't. All right, so don't, you know, I'm, I'm not putting her down. It just... She's always resented me because I've been in trouble. And she took it out on me. I was trying to save a relationship between you know, some communication between his mother and myself. I tried for almost three years. The things that uh, she has said and have done to me in those last three years have not exactly been very nice. You know, I am a very patient, patient person. I fought every day, every minute to keep my relationship with my kid. It was always her. And I found out that she was the devil, and it took me a long time to figure that out. Can, uh, can you do me a favor and just keep me uh, 
posted on how David's doing, you know, there's an improvement or, or whatever. I'd like to know. What's happened? Wait. Take it easy, Marie. What? Nothing to worry about. What is it? Come on, see for yourself. <clears throat> no tubes. We couldn't wait for you to get here. Hi, mommy. He was saving his first words for you. <laughs> Can I have some ice cream? <laughs> Soon. Soon, honey. Is that what you've been thinking about all this time? Where's Daddy? I'm not sure, sweetheart. He's been working very hard, and he's, he's been sick. Is he in jail? Why do you ask? 